In this video, we're going to look at the two different methods of defining stock inside of Mastercam. We'll also talk about why you would choose one versus the other, especially when it relates to defining where material exists for a toolpath to machine. So next up on this part, we need to select our machine and then we can hop into stock setup. Now, before we hop into stock setup, I just want to mention a few things. Uh, so yeah, we need to rough this part out and we need to remove a lot of material as quickly as possible. Um, it would be best if we can do that all within one toolpath. Uh, since we've got some 3D shapes here, you know, these angled uh, edges over here, uh, I think it's going to be best to use OptiRough. Now, good news, Mastercam 2022, any mill license will have access to OptiRough now. So going forward, uh, we've all got access to this toolpath. So if you've got 3D shapes or 3D surfaces or components in your part you're trying to machine, probably best to use the OptiRough toolpath. Now, when I use OptiRough, I like to give it starting stock. So there's two trains of thought here, and we're going to look at uh, some things here as we progress. So before we get going, the first thing we need to do is get a machine. So I'm going ahead and I'm grabbing my default mill. Now, this, the, the steps here that we use for stock definition, especially when you're getting started, is you come into the properties of the machine group, click on stock setup, and here's where you define your stock. Now, there's there's different, you know, as we mentioned, different trains of thought over, is this useful? Is it creating an extra step? Because when I do create the OptiRough toolpath, as mentioned, I want to give it some stock information. I have to use a stock model to do that. So basically, when I create the stock model, um, it's going to be the exact same thing as creating the stock in here. Now, hopefully one day, Mashcam enables a switch inside of the OptiRough toolpath, which will allow it to see the stock set up inside of the machine group. Uh, but until that happens, we have to create a stock model outside of the stock model in the machine group in order to give it to the OptiRough toolpath. So I'm going to go through both steps here. And uh, again, we'll talk a little bit more as we go through this on reasons why you would use one versus the other. So in stock setup, now we didn't show this in the instruction sheet, but basically we're given a piece of material that's one by two by three, and it is a piece of 316 stainless steel. Okay, now this part, uh, let me just click this here. I'll go, I'll click all solids. And this is just going to basically make a square box that's the size of the uh, the part out here. So you can see it's 1.88 by 2.8 by 0 0.8, call it 873. So slightly smaller than our 1 by 2 by 3. Now when I machine this, I want equal amounts of stock on left and right, you know, front to back, and I need some material on top of my part and some material on the, the bottom as well. Now what we're going to do here to try and save setups is we're going to machine five sides in one setup. So front, back, left, right, and top. And then afterwards, we'll flip it over and machine the bottom. So what I want to do here is leave as much material on the bottom of the part as possible, because we're going to be holding that in our in our vise. So we're going to hold on to the excess material in our vise, which will eventually get a machined away in part number two. So I want equal amounts of stock left and right, front to back. I want just a tiny bit of stock on top to machine off with uh, one of our finishing tool paths. And then the remainder of that thickness of the stock on the bottom of the part to be held in the vise. So that's going to be tough to spread out in this menu here. And that's where we get into this bounding box function, which can become uh, quite useful when we want to split stock up in different, uh, different methods. So first thing we do here, we click our model, we click OK. It makes that same box that encases our part. And now I can come over here and I can start moving or expanding my stock. Uh, so the radio button is in the middle. So when I increase in X, it will increase equally on both sides. So that's that's what we want here, three inches. And again, since I'm in the middle, the same thing will happen here for Y, I can just increase this, and it will increase equally on the front and the back. Now top and bottom, as mentioned, I want to place a minimal amount of stock on top. So I'm going to go with 20 thou. Um, I could come down here and anchor to the bottom. And when I expand this, it will all expand up. Or an easier way, I can just come over here and click this top face. I can click and drag this arrow up. So now I'm extending in this direction. Now I only want a million, uh, a 20 thou extension here. So I'm just going to type in 20 thou, hit enter twice, and that puts that 20 thou extra stock on top. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my anchor to the top of the part here, the top of the box. And when I increase this to one inch, 
all that remainder of the stock will go below the parts. Let me get into a uh, front view here. We can see there's a minimal above, nothing below. When I increase this to one inch, 1 1.0, I'll click enter. Notice all that stock has been placed below the part. Okay, so this is how I want the stock to be set up on my machine. So that's all good. Going to green check. Now that bounding box function will populate these fields in here in order to create that stock the way we defined in bounding box. Okay, going to green check that. Now, as mentioned, before I get into the OptiRef, I want to feed the OptiRef toolpath some stock, and I need to do a stock model for that. So when I launch into my stock model right now, I've got options here to define this stock exactly the same way that I defined it in the stock setup. Uh, first things first, let's give this a name. We'll say starting stock. And I could, you know, so here, here's the argument why we didn't really need to go through the stock setup in the machine group first, because I have access to that same bounding box function over here. I could click on that, do the same uh, stretching movement that we did in the previous setup. Uh, also here, you know, since we did go through this and maybe this is, you know, you're feeling this is redundant, we can just set this to rectangle and click this button here. It will auto populate with the already created stock model or stock setup settings within the machine, uh, the mill group there, the properties. So advantages versus disadvantages. Advantage, uh, well, number one, we have to have a stock model to, to drive the Opera toolpath based on stock. So this is re required if you want uh, to do this stock you know, driven uh, toolpath. Uh, pluses and minuses. So when we do this stock model, we've got additional options. You know, we can make this stock a certain material. So some people like to make it uh, glass so that the stock model is transparent, see-through. Not a bad idea. We can also change colors. So different stock models can be different colors. Can we can see the different colors as we progress through our stock models in the program. More on that later. And then as we, again, as we progress further along, stock models are important because we can obviously apply tool paths to them. Um, so I'm going to click on the green check here and let that generate. So there's our stock model. Now, reasons why you would not want to use a stock model. So if you don't have to drive a tool path with stock, um, it's easier to do the stock setup in here. The only reason why I say it's easier, now this is not you know a lot easier, but if you are using a stock model as your only stock in your in your your program, you have to change your simulation settings to use the stock model instead of the default stock setup. So by uh, by default settings, your your machine group is set to use the stock setup for your verifies. So if you don't define stock, uh, it's not, your verifies aren't going to work very good. So that's the only thing to keep in mind there. Okay, so before we carry on, uh, I did say that I was making the stock model out of glass, and it doesn't look like glass right now. So I'm going to my view tab. Let's turn on the material. And there you can see now my stock model is in fact transparent. Okay, so if that's too transparent or not transparent enough, uh, you've got the option to change that in the different grades over here. So if you pick something about the middle-ish, see it's a little bit less see-through. So again, personal preference, whatever you choose, it's not going to affect the stock model at all. It's just a, a visual thing. All right, so I think that's a good discussion there and a good point to leave this video uh, and cut it off. Uh, we've talked about stock definition here, you know, in the machine group versus a stock model, why we use one versus the other, and it will become more apparent why we need to use that stock model uh, in the next video when we use it as a uh, source stock for our OptiRough toolpath.